This video looks at deadbeat control. So earlier videos introduced the concept of state feedback and demonstrated that with a state feedback of the form u goes minus kx, you can move the poles. It was shown that when a system is fully controllable, the poles can be placed arbitrarily, that is, wherever you like. Now this video is going to focus specifically on the discrete case, and we're going to ask what happens if we choose, so that's a key point, we choose to place all the poles on the origin. Now, first of all, we're going to remind you of the links between pole positions and behaviour when you have a discrete system. So you'll notice, first of all, we've drawn here the unit circle because we're in discrete time and that's the stability boundary. So what if you had a pole at 0.8? Well, the corresponding behaviour looks like this, x of k equals 0.8 to the power k times x of 0. What if you have a pole at 0.5? Well, the behaviour is x of k equals 0.5 to the k times x of 0. And you can do a similar trick if you have complex poles, though of course these should appear in conjugate pairs. But finally, what happens if you have a pole at the origin? Well, you'll notice the key dynamic is given here you get naught to the power k. And therefore, if you've got a pole at the origin, the state of a first order process goes to zero in one sample. So it's a really important observation. If you put poles at the origin, it's going to drive modes to zero straight away. So using pole placement for a controllable system, you can place all the poles at the origin. And if you do, this is called deadbeat control. So deadbeat means put all the poles on the origin. Is this a good idea? And what's the corresponding system behavior? We know that it's converged <coughs> to zero very quickly, but what about transients? So first of all, we'll give you some examples to demonstrate what this might look like. So here's an example, two states. Um, we've got an A, a B, and this is the K that you require to put all the closed loop poles on the origin. And here are the dynamics. You can see first state in blue, second state in green, input in U. And what do you notice? The states and the input converge to zero in two samples. Remember, this is discrete, so in fact we're only worrying about these particular values here. So in two samples, it goes to zero. Here's a second example. Now we've got three states, and again, you can see with this particular k, I can put all the poles on the origin. And here's a typical behavior. And again, what do you notice? All of the states in the input converge to zero, but this time in three samples, not two samples. And the key point is they've all gone to zero, so hereafter you have zero. So with poles at the origin, the state trajectories seem to converge to zero in n samples, where n is the system order. Now this is what you expect, because if you do a basic bit of algebra, you'll find that the z transform for the states x of z is given by this expression here, z i to the minus a inverse times b u plus x of zero. Now I'm not going to bother doing the algebra, but what you'll notice is that clearly you're going to get numerator terms, of this form, which are n minus 1 order, and the denominator term, which is nth order. But as all the poles are at the origin, then the denominator is just z to the n. All the other coefficients have been made zero. And therefore, what you've got left with is just a numerator, which has n terms. You can see the numerator I've given here, and because the numerator has n terms, then it means your dynamic has n terms. And that's why it takes n samples before you converge to a fixed value. Here's an example of um, the 3 by 3. You'll see if I do the zi minus a plus bk inverse, you'll notice you've got a z squared over z cubed up here, or a z over z cubed here, and a 1 over z cubed here. So it's clear that when you finish your operation, the numerator is going to have z squared terms, z terms, and constants. So an interim summary. 
dead beat control gives the fastest possible convergence and the fastest possible is actually n samples where n is the system order quicker is not possible because the numerator polynomial will have n terms in general dead beat can be a useful analysis tool as it enables you to capture the entire dynamic in just n samples however here's the key point is such fast convergence a good thing so what we'll do here is we'll compare the performance of deadbeat with optimal control and an arbitrary pole placement we're not going to use any specific criteria but we're just going to look at the sort of behaviors that result and see if they give us any insights so here's the first example you'll notice the pole placement that's this one where I've arbitrarily put the poles at 0.8 you can see deadbeat here where you can see it's basically gone to zero in two samples and you can see optimal control down here where if you look very very carefully you can see it's not actually converged um, to zero but it's very close to zero after a few samples so what's the key thing in this particular case pole placement has performed relatively poorly and what that comes down to is my choice of poles was unwise and there you might be saying well that's because it's not always easy to know where to pick the poles but if you try and compare deadbeat and optimal control in this particular case they're not hugely different they're actually fairly similar what about example four then well again you'll see that pole placement has not performed particularly well so we're not too impressed with that and that comes because I don't really know where to place the poles and if I place them poorly it doesn't work very well but if I look at the dead beat you'll see it's got a very aggressive input so here's the input you see it's in this light blue curve and so you can see that light blue curve in there it's actually very aggressive but yes I've stopped moving after three samples so I've jumped up and down a lot but I've got to zero in three samples and you compare that to optimal control and you'll see the corresponding input is relatively calm and still my convergence is reasonable I've got pretty close to the origin after about six samples now again the tuning of the optimal control is a bit arbitrary but what do you notice this is the sort of trade-off you're looking at with deadbeat control you tend to get very aggressive inputs and you also tend to get fairly aggressive state trajectories and here's a last example and you'll see you've got a similar pattern where you'll notice here the state trajectory is quite aggressive compared to what you get with optimal control and similarly the input is slightly more aggressive so deadbeat gives you a, is more aggressive with the input and often more aggressive with the states so deadbeat is defined only for discrete systems and it's a pole placement design placing all the poles at the origin and so the responses converge in n samples where n is the system order now this can be a useful benchmark a useful analysis tool but rarely I haven't said never but rarely will it actually give you overall satisfactory performance and implicitly you find deadbeat control tends to be poorly conditioned and sensitive and likely to demand overactive inputs so you wouldn't really want to use it in practice